Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be looking at surviving your first night in every biome. And make sure to stick around till the end because I'm going to show you how you can reliably find buildings in the Mistlands without even being able to fight the monsters. The first place you need to survive in is the meadows, and honestly, you're probably going to die here. Like, that's fine, in the beginning of the game you start out naked and the enemies, the boars, they kill you pretty quickly. But aside from that, the meadows are really peaceful, and we'll move right on to the Black Forest. Surviving the first night in the meadows may be cake, but surviving in the Black Forest isn't so simple. You see, the Black Forest has plenty of threats, Grey Dwarfs mostly, but then there's these big blue guys. These are the ones that are going to threaten your base and all sorts of other nonsense. You're going to get used to running away from trolls. A lot of surviving in the Black Forest, you could argue, is just running away from trolls. It's alright. You can survive the first night in the biome. Just keep watching and I'll show you how. Oh, here we are. This is promising. That's exactly the kind of thing that we are looking for. A tall structure that isn't inhabited currently by a troll. Normally there's going to be some kind of enemies here, like skeletons usually. So you'd want to come in with some actual weapons and like... Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> but this is the structure you're looking for. Believe it or not, a better option is actually a troll cave. Because for whatever reason, the troll is stuck inside. It's basically a troll jail. You can essentially just take up residence in his front doorstep and never have any problems. Just make sure you don't accidentally go inside. Oh! Troll caves in general are kind of funny because sometimes you get a double whammy. You get one outside and then you go inside and there's also a troll. Yet yeah, in other situations, I've found troll caves that are empty on the outside and they're even empty on the inside. So I don't know if that's like I killed it and forgot or if it's just a spawn chance thing. But really what you pick first is all about what you find. You can't just look for a troll cave or just look for a tower. You have to look for the first thing that you come across that works, right? Let's imagine it isn't a troll cave. As you saw earlier, I got ganked by an archer. So you'll want to bring some kind of weapon, probably just a club, and you can take advantage of the fact that the skeletons will fight the Grey Dwarf. Here's a realistic structure that you find a lot in the Black Forest. These stone tower things filled with like two skeletons. They can be in varying degrees and conditions, but I died so much filming this video that it, it really reminds me that I need to tell you something. Don't go running around like I am, even if you think you know where you're going. If just having like the basics, which is blueberries, raspberries, and honey, you won't die anywhere near as much. Don't skimp on the food. In Valheim, the food is really important. Now, your tower can be pretty destroyed, but it does need to get high, because as you saw earlier, there's trolls, and those trolls have quite a range. So you're gonna need to get high up to be safe. As long as your bed's high up in the air, higher than a troll's range, and you have an enclosed area where enemies can't see you, then you're going to be totally safe up here. And this is really the key to surviving your first night in the Black Forest. You'd be able to build a minimal shelter like everything you've seen here with just two stacks of wood, or 100 wood. Make sure to bring some stone for a fire, and you might need to make a little roof for it so that it doesn't go out if it's raining. Now, while it's true that you are mostly safe up here, that doesn't mean you should be up here making noise if there is one of these stick troll around. Just run, because it'll only attack the base if it can't get to you. And don't underestimate the range of these stick trolls. They are monsters. You can also lose enemies pretty easily if you jump over stuff, particularly logs and that sort of thing, because it'll increase the amount of pathfinding they have to do, which is going to distract them. And eventually, before you know it, you'll lose the troll, although you might pick up something else. And that's really all you need to know to survive your first night in the Black Forest. So now let's move on to the swamp. Now, let's be real. If you want to survive in the swamp, this berries and honey and it's not going to cut it. You're going to need a bit better food. Your life will be a lot easier if you're not used to the swamp if you use two food items and honey, just because honey gives you a decent amount of stamina, which you will need, but really you're probably going to get hit at some point, so that health is going to be important when you're learning the ropes. And also, quick disclaimer, I brightened up the swamp because this is a YouTube video and I don't want you guys to look at dark swamp all day, but when you guys actually play, it's all dark and dreary. When you're in the swamp, you're going to be wet constantly. There's no way to be dry outside because the swamp's in essentially eternal rain. And there's all sorts of structures in the swamp. Here's a cool tower, right? But 
depending on your combat abilities, it might be too much. Because this thing's going to be filled with Droger. Believe it or not, Swamp Crypts can actually be a great option. Because you can often jump up on them and then enemies can't get up to you. Except the oozes. This can be a great starting point, although it is vulnerable to archers. But realistically, we're going to need to find something more protective. But to do that, you're going to need to survive. And that means staying away from these things. If you see this stuff, don't get anywhere near it, okay? What you're looking for are actually the wooden structures. But as you can see, not something like this. Now, this is more the kind of structure that you're looking for. You want something that's high up off the ground. Realistically, though, you're probably going to die if you actually just try and run around the swamp looking for those tall structures. And here I'll show you an even easier way to do this, because now I've reset everything, so this is what it'll actually look like. No more artificial lighting. You see, as long as you stay in the ocean biome or black forest biome, you'll be able to see into the swamp from the carve. This way, you're going to be able to find the place that you're going and scope out what enemies are nearby. You can even shoot them with the bow. Either way, you'll eventually find yourself atop a tall structure in the swamp. And at this point, 100 wood and 10 stone should be all you need. Usually, you can just sort of continue the pattern of the building that was already there, fill in the gaps, and it's really important that you enclose the space entirely. Because the swamps is really dangerous. As soon as it's nighttime, go to bed. As long as you stay up here, you'll probably be okay. But you can hear all the activity down there. There's danger as soon as you touch the ground. You're going to get some attention when you build and move around loudly or go into the base or leave it, but for the most part, you'll be fine. As long as it's high off the ground. For the mountains, preparation's even more important, and all of this food is just not going to cut it. You absolutely need frost resist, otherwise you're just going to die, and then it's going to be a real pain if you set up a spawn spot without frost resistance. The mountains are definitely one of those biomes that's all about jumping and stamina. So they go all out in stamina and get that frost resistance. This is the absolute minimum to survive in the mountain for your first night. But really, you'll be much better off if you also bring a fine wood bow and a stack of fire arrows. Fire arrows are really helpful if you've seen the wolf before it's seen you, because you'll probably one-shot it. You'll also be able to take out the drakes really easily with the fire arrows, even if you have a weak bow skill. But really, this is all unrealistic, because you shouldn't be fighting these enemies. You're too vulnerable, you're gonna die. You need to stay alive, it's just your first night. You don't have all the stuff and the experience. Anywhere the snow is, is really dangerous, because that means lots of monsters could easily attack you. What you're actually looking for are these steep areas that have these little patches of white. And what you're gonna do is just jump up the steepest area you can, and then grab your hoe and level the ground there. Even when you're being chased by a wolf, you can see that they're able to climb, but they have trouble. So you can sort of jump from platform to platform. And you're going to want to go for the first thing you find. These structures are pretty hit or miss. You might get lucky like this and find one that's totally empty. You'll often be chased by wolves, but as you find the structure, you can just come up here. And the wolves will go to town on everything else. But as you can tell, wolves can't use stairs. So you'll be fine. Just stay up off the ground. You can get hunted in the mountains, so there's going to be events that bring wolves to you. You're going to need to get used to getting on higher elevation so that the wolves can't even attack you. The key to escaping the wolves is to finding little patches like this, but being aware that wolves can climb. So you have to sort of go from patch to patch and then find areas that they really can't get to. Sometimes these stones will work, but usually you end up just buying yourself some time. There's very specific things that you're looking for in the mountains. Notice how this frost cave is sort of in the side of the mountain? Whereas this structure is on a more open area, right? The snow is dangerous. The more the white snow you see, the more open area, that means the easier access the enemies will have to your base. But really, one of the best things you can find is actually a frost cave that's in the side of a mountain. This is because frost caves will always have this sort of flat area that you can build out. And worst case scenario, you can just go into the frost cave. This will give you a perfectly safe place. You can also make a campfire inside the frost cave to get a rested bonus. Something to note about the mountains is that there's really little wood. So you really have to bring the wood. In general, 100 wood and 10 stone is going to be all you need. I personally like to start with a workbench and a campfire. But make sure you can still access the frost cave, just in case something goes wrong. 
It's totally possible to build out here and expand, but it's all really vulnerable right now, so I wouldn't recommend that straight away. I find that it's better to make something absolutely minimal. All you really need to do is totally block visibility so that you can just always go into the frost cave because then the monster won't stay outside and try and attack you. They'll leave as long as you have the patience. Now, you've probably noticed the pattern by now. Find the shelter, get it as high as possible, and make a little safe place. That's worked up until this point. But to survive in the plains and the mislands, we're gonna need to get a little bit more creative. Now you're gonna learn how to survive your first night in the plains. And what if I tell you it's actually even easier than the Black Forest? But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Really, you need to prepare. You're gonna need a root harness. This thing is like the key to the plains. It means that Death Skeeto take three or four hits to kill you instead of just one. You'll also need a weapon to fight said Death Skeeto. Usually a fine wood bow and some fire arrows is gonna be fine. The last thing here is a pickaxe. And you'll see why this is really the key to making this easy. There's basically a magical safe place that we're gonna find. This magical safe place is actually all over the plains. It's really, really common. But before we can get there, you'll need to get comfortable navigating the plains. The plains is all about patience. You need to walk, not run. And you're gonna scan the horizon constantly looking for these death skeetos. It's okay if you miss a couple times and you may even hit him if you're lucky like that. You want to kill the death skeeto, but you want to stay far away from the locks. So what you learn to do is sort of scan the horizon and move around slowly with your bow. Ah, here we go. This is a perfect rock. It's up high. It's not near any tar pits or enemies. This is what we're going for. All you gotta do is find the center of the rock and then start mining. And before you know it, you'll find yourself in a nice humble little cave. And because you entered through the top, it's not actually possible for any of the enemies aside from the death skeeto to get inside. This means you'll be able to place your workbench, your bed, and your campfire with relative impunity. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. So now I'm going to show you how you can go stay overnight in the Mistlands pretty easily in the Bronze Age. It's actually even easier to survive overnight in the Mistlands than it is in the plains or even the swamp. Because you see, in the Mistlands, you're not alone. You have friends. And what's awesome about these Dverger bases is you're inevitably going to find them along the coastline. They seem to spawn here a lot. So this isn't me just getting lucky. This is how it's supposed to be. This is a mission you can do as soon as you can make the carve. Meet the Dverger. These guys are real strong and they'll keep you safe. They're your friends as long as you stay respectful. Now, it's not as simple as just building something in their base because there's this ward here. And sure, you could find ways to cheese the ward and destroy it, but I have an alternative approach for you. Something that's even more rewarding. Because come on, these Dverger, they're awesome. You should live alongside them, not just slaughter them and steal their house. And luckily, we can apply the strategy that we used in the plains here. And what's even better is that we're going to have these guys guarding us and keeping us safe. Now, there's one extra layer this time because there's a ward. So the first step is determining the ward's limit. And if you aggro an enemy, that's where these Dverger come in clutch. It's not long before the Dverger make mincemeat out of any seekers that show up. Once you've found areas that you can actually build stuff in, then your next goal is to find a rock as close to that as possible. And as before in the plains, find the center of it, and then boom! Look at this. Haha, <laughs> did you see that? Well, look at this. I already made this earlier. It's the same strategy as in the plains. You just go from the center of the rock, go down and make a little chamber, make a workbench, put a fireplace there and set up your spawn spot. The advantage here though, is that we have the support of this entire Dverger base. So even though we just got the they were bros event, it doesn't seem to matter. Look at this. There's so many places to stay safe from the fueling and the Dverger make quick work of them, especially the mages. Oh, it's a slaughter. You see what I'm saying? This isn't hard. 
The Mistlands is actually one of the safer places to be. Consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server. And if you want YouTube to recommend you more Valheim content, all you have to do is like this video or anyone else's video about Valheim, and then YouTube's gonna know that you wanna see more of these kind of videos. Thanks for watching, everybody.